untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Quandrix deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The deck has a few different synergies. We've got some plus one counter synergies with our fractal tokens, but we also have some devotion and enter the battlefield synergies thanks to Thassa Deep Dwelling, which is one of the centerpieces of the deck. And another one of those is Tanasir Quandrix, the 5 mana 4 4 legendary Elder Dragon with Flying and Trample. And whenever Tanasir enters a battlefield, double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. And whenever Tanasir attacks, you may have the base, power, and toughness of other creatures you control become equal to Tanasir. Tanasir's power and toughness until end of turn, so this is very synergistic with our Fractal tokens, which have base power and toughness 0, zero and they still get all those plus one counters on top of it. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we do have a little bit of interaction with four copies of Blizzard Brawl, especially nice with our Quandrix Cultivator, which can fetch up an untapped forest and then still let us cast a Blizzard Brawl afterwards. And to support Blizzard Brawl we have a lot of snow-covered basics with six islands, eight snow-covered forests and then Fabled Passage which can also search them up. Then at 2 mana we've got some ramp with the full playset of Lotus Cobra, as well as 4 copies of Emergent Sequence, which can search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, and then it becomes a 0-0 green and blue fractal creature that's still a land, and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each land we had entered the battlefield under our control this turn, so usually means 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, although in some circumstances that might vary. Then those two mana ramp cards can potentially help us cast our four drops on turn three, and especially Manifestation Sage is a nice one to get in play early, as a 2-2 creature that when it enters a battlefield creates a 0-0 green and blue fractal creature token, and we put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where X is the number of cards in our hand, so the sooner we get the Sage in play, the better. Then we also have our four copies of Quandrix Cultivator, a 3-4 Turtle Druid, that when it enters a battlefield we can search our library for a basic forest or island card and put it on the battlefield untapped. And then three copies of Thassa Deep Dwelling, which is very powerful in this deck, as a 6-5 legendary enchantment creature god. It's indestructible, but only turns into a creature as long as our devotion to blue is at least five or more. And at the beginning of our end step, exile up to one other target creature we control and return it to the battlefield right away. So that's great for re-enabling our enter the battlefield abilities, and a lot of creatures in this deck have entered battlefield abilities we can take advantage of with Thassa. And then for three in a blue we can tap another target creature so nice activated ability that gives us a bit more interaction. And interesting to note about Thassa is that Manifestation Sage provides four blue devotion, so by itself Manifestation Sage will turn Thassa into a creature, and we've got other cards that provide ample blue devotion, like Quandrix Cultivator, which provides two blue devotion, as well as a Baron Tolarian Archmage, which is a three mana 2-2 two -two legendary human wizard, that when it enters a battlefield we can return up to one other target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand, so we can bounce opposing creatures with this, and at the beginning of our end step, if a permanent was put into our hand from the battlefield this turn, we get to draw a card. So sometimes it can be beneficial to bounce our own creatures with Baron, so we get to draw a card and maybe re-enable those enter battlefield abilities. And then three copies of Biomathematician as a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield we create a 0-0 green and blue fractal creature token and we put a plus one plus one counter on each fractal we control. So Mathematician is great in multiples and also nice flicker target for Thassa. And then taking a look at our top end, of course, two copies of Tanasir, as well as two copies of Keruga, the Macro Sage, a 5-4 legendary dinosaur hippo. And when Keruga enters a battlefield, draw a card for each author permanent we control with mana value 3 or greater. And we have a lot of expensive permanents in this deck that we can ramp into. So Keruga can draw a ton of cards. Also great flicker target for Thassa if we need to draw even more cards. And then at 6 mana, two copies of Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, the 6-6 legendary Phyrexian with Trample and Haste, saying if we would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of each of those counters on that permanent or player instead. So very synergistic with our Fractal tokens. And if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half that many of each of those counters on that permanent or player instead, around it down. So very effective at shutting down Planeswalkers, as they'll enter the battlefield with half as much loyalty. Very good against opposing sagas which won't be able to level up and trigger their next chapter and of course also great against opposing plus one counter
counter synergies, and then topping off her curve, two copies of the Great Henge as another card draw engine, cost X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, taps for double green and two life, and whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and we get to draw a card, and flickering creatures with the Great Henge in play with fast size also very nice, since we get to draw even more cards with it. And then going over the mana base, we mentioned our snow-covered basics with six islands, eight forests, and our four copies of Fable Passage, also great for enabling landfall on Lotus Cobra. Then we've got four of the blue-green pathway for additional fixing, and two copies of Castle Garenbrig, which is especially nice for ramping out Vorinclex a turn sooner. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. A little bit slow to get started, but Lotus Cobras can make it better. So that sets up maybe a turn 3 Manifestation Sage. Expert gets to have either a land or a Blizzard Brawl, which I don't imagine is going to be great in this matchup. Could also give them Baron, to be fair. Although Baron bouncing my own Manifestation Sage could be cool. Yeah, I'll give them the Blizzard Brawl. Especially if something bad happens to Lotus Cobra, I could see needing the extra lands. Alright, so if Cobra lives, we get to have a Sage. If not, we'll have to reevaluate. Don't really want to bounce the Acquisitions Expert, though. So I might just play land and pass to have a bigger token next turn. Cannot bounce Baron with his own ability, otherwise we could just draw a card here. Alright. Valkyrie we can maybe bounce later. Although Thomas here next turn, doubling our tokens can be pretty nice too. Pun makes me discard too. Think we hang on to Quandrix then? Could also keep Baron, Quandrix, discard Vorinclex land, and then at the very least I get to Baron bounce Valkyrie next turn. And if I draw land I have Quandrix and then Baron still in the back pocket. Yeah, I guess discarding land for Inclex is reasonable too. Alright, Thassa's a nice one with Baron. Manifestation Sage as well. So I'll attack with my Fractal. I'm fine with the trade. And then we'll just play Thassa, Bouncing Baron. So now they need to kill Baron to get rid of this annoying loop. And we've got some other nice targets to flicker. Alright, Elder Fang, what do you get rid of? Hmm, close call. Sage would turn Thassa into a creature, which is probably pretty good here for us. So I guess we get rid of Quandrix, sadly, as much as I would like to double my Fractal's power. So play Sage before playing our land. And I'm probably just going to keep land in hand here. So Thassa gets to attack, 4-4 four four gets to attack if they want to triple block it, that's fine by me. And then I don't really need to bounce anything with Baron, or I could bounce my own Sage, I suppose. Yeah, maybe that's the play, and then keep land in hand still.
We don't get to draw with Baron because this triggers at the beginning of our end step. So it's too late with Thassa's trigger. Opponent had another discard spell to take away. Our Manifestation Sage, sadly. Cold Vader's a fine pickup too. Could also just use Thassa's ability to tap down Valkyrie for what it's worth. But I guess getting the Cultivator out there is fine. And then grab another blue source. And then... Yeah, the 4-4 can attack. Opponent trades. And then Thassa can flicker Cultivator to get an extra land. And our opponent packs it in. The Thassa synergy is being too strong here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. No two mana ramp, but being on the play and having a three drop should make up for it. And then Cultivator ramps us into Vorinclex potentially. Do still need a fourth land. Opponent on blue black featuring Yurion. Cobra's a bit late to the party. But probably still the play here. Opponent draws with Glimpse. Alright, Fabled Passage, a nice draw. So I could already play Vorinclex if I wanted to. I kinda feel like just saving my Fabled Passage, playing Cultivator here. And then waiting on Vorinclex until a bit later. Although getting Vorinclex in play is tempting. It's just pretty likely to get killed. And we'll still go for it. Opponent's got an omen. That's fine. Smack them for eight, and hope they don't have extinction events. Our opponent is fetching, so they probably have an extinction event to wipe the board here. Then we'll have to follow up with Cultivator to get back to our Great Henge. Alright, just a heartless act. Could have been worse. Emergent sequence to draw. So it can go Cultivator into Emergent Sequence, which is a nice sequence. And hit for two. Alright, next turn we can play Great Henge at long last. I guess we'll need a land now for that to work. Probably just go for Keruga, draw a card. And then Fabled Passage. I probably play, but not sacrifice yet and save it for Cobra. And under most circumstances, we can play Henge. Great spot to find a Thassa as well. Alright, opponent's just gonna draw a bunch of cards. But only single black. So they would have needed something like Cling to Dust to gain three to survive, but yeah, opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Double Mathematician synergizes with Manifestation Sage which we can hopefully play on turn 3, thanks to our Cobra. Opponent's got their own Cobra. Alright, let's see who can ramp into the biggest and scariest cards here. Four mana. For Wolf Willow Haven. Into Scale the Heights. Alright, that was unexpected. So 
So your opponent ramping. Passes. Next turn we can do some damage with another Lotus Cobra. And since they didn't want to trade, I'll offer the trade. <laughs> so, 7 power and toughness on turn 3, not bad. And Mathematician's going to add even more counters to our Fractal. But our opponent is setting up something big. Yeah, and Genesis Ultimatum on turn 4. Probably going to be hard to beat. And my suspicions are correct. Four Inclex, Nerves or Mathematician. Quite a bit too here. So my best hope is stop decking a Blizzard Brawl so we can find Vorinclex. Another Cultivator. So far Vorinclex is really the only problem we're facing, so if we can get rid of it we're not in terrible shape. Of course pretty far behind on mana. I would love to double block here. Alright. We lose our 5-5, five five, but I think we need to get rid of Vorinclex. And Great Henge the draw. So, play Cobra. If I fetch, make two more mana, six total, still short of Great Henge. But I can play Mathematician times two. pass a turn, and then next turn we should be able to play our Henge anyway. Another scale the heights. And the world tree. Well, let's see if our opponent has any gods to search up next turn. Ooh, all right. I guess that ends the game as well. Ugin the Spirit Dragon is gonna make short work of our board state. Yeah, our deck's not very good at handling Ugin. Our best chance is getting an early Vorinclex in play. I will destroy my Cultivator can help me ramp towards Henge, perhaps. So we do get to cast Great Henge next turn, but don't know if that's going to be enough. They don't seem to have any gods to search with World Tree. Blizzard Brawl, not exactly what is needed, but I guess it gives me a one mana discount on Henge as well. So we'll attack Ugin first with both, perhaps. And then we get to keep our Henge in play for at least one turn. So 
So I need our opponent to draw a bunch of lands in a row here. Ugin minus fours. All right, foreign clicks over the top one time. All right, just the land. Keep that in hand in case of Manifestation Sage. We still have a chance to come back here. Ogun's at two, so it's going to be a while before it can ultimate or take out our Henge. All right, that probably seals the deal. Although Vorinclex would still be effective at stopping the Saga from ticking up. Blizzard Brawl doesn't do much. Yeah, I think that's probably game now. Maybe one more turn to top deck of Vorinclex specifically, but then our opponent also has this Ugin and now Ultimatum. Second ultimatum, sure. Can we somehow deck the opponents? Doesn't seem likely. Well, you're not liking for spirit. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. A couple ways to ramp into Thassa. Question is which land to lead with. I think we save Fable Passage for Cobra in this instance. And then Sequence also triggers Landfall on Cobra, so we can potentially do some interesting things next turn. Assuming Cobra survives. Sadly, Eliminate's gonna take care of it. Well, nevertheless, we can go Fabled Passage, Fetch, and then play Merchant Sequence, which will now be much larger than before. A nice 3-3. Three, three. And then we can attack, play Thassa. And I'm not gonna flicker my forest here. But next turn we can play Vorinclex. Binding can destroy lands, so can't actually kill anything here. And now Vorinclex is gonna prevent Binding from ticking up. Might as well give Vorinclex Vigilance. Just to see that sweet animation again. Carvac the Spiteful, giving everything minus one, minus one. Still probably worth killing with Blizzard Brawl, just so we can get in more damage. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Definitely fetch with one of our fabled passages right away. And I'll get an island. Turn two, Cobra. Turn three, Mathematician. The rest can take my Blizzard Brawl. Turn 
do need our Cobra to survive to play Mathematician at the moment. And then Baron can also bounce her own Mathematician to draw cards and help us make more Fractals. Remorse can have a look. Takes Baron. Alright. So... Let's see here, if we draw land next turn, if Cobra's still in play, I don't need the extra mana from Fabled Passage to play Quandrix, although it would help me play Vorinclex. So either way, it's probably fine to hold my Fabled Passage uncracked. Alright, Emergence Sequence, so I can play that first, so Fabled Passage comes into play untapped. This makes a mana, Fabled Passage makes a mana but that still doesn't let me play Quandrix, so in that case I could still hold the Fable Passage for next turn to make an extra mana. Does mean this is a little smaller, but it's probably fine. So assuming my board stays intact, I can play Tunnelseer next turn. Well, the extinction event on even gonna make that a lot more difficult, so now I probably want to fetch so I can at least play a three drop if we draw one. So we're one turn away from Tunnels here. Sadly, no counters in play anymore. So just a 4-4 Flying Trample that's gonna pump up our Mathematician next turn. Would have been pretty strong with all those random tokens in play still. The rest is gonna see Vorinclex which hopefully comes down next turn. Thassa is interesting too. Alright, we'll attack. Tanazir pumps Mathematician. And then Thassa flickers Mathematician. Opponent can trade for Faceless Haven if they want. Fair enough. So now any creatures with enter battlefield abilities are going to be even more powerful. Opponent's got a backup, Faceless Haven. Emergent Sequence to draw. Alright, so I can attack for four. And then Flickering Tunnels here will also put more counters on Emergent Sequence. Uh, they've got a removal spell for tunnels here, sadly. Don't want to flicker our own lands. Although flickering it, I guess, has the advantage of not exposing it to removal, so we're more likely to play Vorinclex. But keeping the counter land in play can maybe help us attack if we tap down Grey Merchant with Thassa. Or if we pick up more synergies like Mathematician. Alright, point on targets themselves with Peer into the Abyss. Falls to two. So they seem dead to Vorinclex now. So they're probably playing the Peer plus Underworld Dreams combo. But they got a bit desperate. And that should seal the deal. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. 
turn to Lotus Cobra into Emergent Sequence. Hopefully pick up some 4 and 5 mana plays to bridge the gap. Opponent with a Savai Trium. Vanishing vs. Exiles Cobra. But we have a backup. So, actually don't hate the sequence of Cobra. Fable Passage to fetch. And then make a 3-3 Emergent Sequence. And then next turn we can still maybe play Great Henge. Alright. Falky is gonna see a hand without any creatures in it. Alright, Cultivator's nice too, but... We're just gonna make a mana. Play Great Henge. And have these fights, or we can keep Blizzard Brawl in hand since Falky isn't really bothering me. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then don't want to offer the trade for Cobra. We'll just gain two life end of turn. And next turn Cultivator will draw a card. So we're putting some sort of Mordu control deck. Vanishing Verse can exile Great Henge as well, so that's potentially a problem card. Double Cultivator, get to live the dream. Even a Fable Passage for more mana if we need it. Alright, Mathematician, get in there. And then we can attack and probably find to trade away my Cobra now. So what's the main concern here? Something like an extinction event on even would get rid of most of my stuff. But it would also wipe the opponent's board. Right, Doom foretold we should be able to manage. Just get rid of my Cobra here. Oh yes, Keruga is awesome. Picked a Baron times two, so I could bounce my own creature here to generate a bit of value. Although, I guess I can also just kill the opponent here. Alright, fine, I guess we'll win the game. Although, it would have been sweet to bounce our own Kiruga, for instance, to keep going off. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, missing a 2 mana ramp card. So this hand's a little bit slow to get going. It is tempting, even as a 6 card hand with only one great henge, this would be fine. So we'll try it. 
and then hopefully pick up something to bridge the gap. Although the more cards in hand, of course, the bigger the fractal token gets. Thassa also going to be quite good here with Cultivator and Sage to flicker. So just need one more land. Alrighty. Play Cobra. Opponent draws of Eidolon. And uh, take 4 down to 12. So this is probably our last chance to draw a fourth line, which we did. Let's try and stabilize with Manifestation Sage. They can kill the Sage itself with another Deadweight potentially, but that leaves our 5-5, which can play defense nicely. Interesting. I'm just going to block the Eidolon here. Even a Heartless Act shrinking this down would still make this a profitable block. Alright, Village Rites. Gonna sacrifice Eidolon. And an Archfiend's Vessel. So, probably want to get my Great Henge online as soon as possible. Could also go for Tanazir Quandrix, make it 10 10 Fractal. And then next turn I can play two mana Henge. Yeah, if I play Henge I can't do anything else this turn. And then we'll keep our Tantan on defense since the opponent can just jump with Vessel. So they need a pretty specific answer to get rid of my Fractals, since Heartless Egg doesn't work. Opponent attacks. Am I okay with them making a 5-5 here, if they have a Call of the Death Dweller? Prefer not to. The life gain of Great Hand should keep us alive here. They've got Rebirth plus maybe another Village Rites to make their Demon anyway. Alright, Mogus' favor will get the job done as well. But now it's our turn to have some fun. Great Henge into... Let's see if we go Cultivator, I can still play Cobra. So that seems good. I could play another Henge just to gain two life, which may or may not be worth it, but we can attack with our Fractal anyway. If we also attacked with Thanos here, we could attack with a 14 power Fractal, but it doesn't seem quite necessary. Yeah, I guess we'll play it safe. And just play another Henge for the two life. And then Thassa should be able to close things out for us. Baron also very effective against the Demon token. So if we want to play it absolutely safe, we would chum block with Tunnels here. Alright, we'll take a bit of a risk here so we can hopefully see Tunnels here in action. But our opponent concedes before that happened. Alright, so we got to see our blue-green Quandrix deck in action today. 
might not be the most powerful deck in standard, although it does have some cool synergies going on, especially involving Thassa and the various flicker effects. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.